The son of Esther and Aaron Burr Sr., grandson of the famous theologian Jonathan Edwards, Burr was born into American royalty but lost much of his family at a young age. He graduated from Princeton University at the age of 16 and fought in the American Revolution. In 1782, he married Theodosia Prevost. They raised their daughter, also named Theodosia, to be as educated and well-rounded as any boy in the New Republic. He served as a U.S. Senator of New York, as well as Vice President under Thomas Jefferson's first term. Hamilton was born an illegitimate child in the West Indies, but excelled in his studies and earned the admiration of more distinguished men. Educated at Columbia University, he served as one of George Washington's aides during the Revolution and later became the first Treasury Secretary. Lauded as the founder of the American economic system, Hamilton was also a father of eight and husband of Elizabeth Schuyler. He was a leader of the Federalist Party, which advocated strong central government, a key framer of the Constitution, and author of the Federalist Papers. Both men were distinguished lawyers and worked together on cases, including the Manhattan Well murder case, the first murder trial in U.S. history. Their opposing styles complemented rather than conflicted, and they rose to the top of the New York bar. While Hamilton was personally well with Burr, he fiercely opposed the other's politics. Republican Burr was a political opportunist, and Hamilton, a staunch Federalist, deemed him untrustworthy. For 15 years, he harshly criticized Burr in writing. The tipping point was a letter in which Hamilton expressed an unknown, still more despicable opinion of Burr, who had just lost the New York gubernatorial election partly due to Hamilton's insults. Burr wrote a letter of inquiry to Hamilton, and their subsequent exchange of letters led to Burr issuing the challenge. Dueling was not a senseless or suicidal act of violence, but a legitimate method to redeem one's honor. To issue a challenge, as Burr did, was to stand up to an attack on one's virtue. To accept a challenge, as Hamilton did, was to take responsibility for one's words and actions. Before the duel, both men put their financial affairs in order and wrote letters. Burr to his daughter, the only surviving member of his immediate family, and Hamilton to his wife. Hamilton also wrote a paper in which he claimed that he was morally opposed to dueling, though he had been involved in 10 previously, and would not fire at Burr. On July 11, 1804, Burr and Hamilton met on the dueling grounds at Weehawken, New Jersey. Hamilton, as he had written, fired into the air. Burr fired seconds later, fatally wounding the other man where the bullet lodged into his lower abdomen. Hamilton died the following day. As Hamilton was celebrated and mourned, Burr was defamed as a murderer. He would never return to politics and was tried for treason in 1807, accused of attempting to create a Mexican empire and convince the western states to secede. He was acquitted but disgraced. Burr rarely spoke of the duel, responding enigmatically or coldly to questions. Burr spent several years in Europe in self-imposed exile before returning to New York in 1812 and quietly practicing law until his death in 1836. Burr outlived many of his contemporaries, the other founding fathers, but was incredibly lonely in his old age after the deaths of his daughter and grandson. Burr and Hamilton's legacies are forever linked. Where Hamilton's ends, Burr's begins. The two men were not, as many assume, bitter enemies. They shared a war, a livelihood, and a city. Both admirable gentlemen, brave soldiers, and accomplished politicians, they should be looked upon by posterity not as polar opposites, but two sides of the same coin, simply put together at the wrong place and the wrong time. <laughs>